Hello! Welcome to the Introduction to Proofs video for Number Theory, the Fundamental Theorem of Arithmetic. My name is Professor Michael Polyuk. The learning objectives for this video are, by the end of this video, you should be able to adapt the proof that the square root of 2 is irrational to prove related statements, you should be able to state the Fundamental Theorem of Arithmetic, and you should be able to adapt the proof that log base 48 of 72 is irrational to prove related statements. We'll review logarithms in this video. Our motivation is that primes are the building blocks of the integers, or sometimes people say primes are the atoms of the integers. So everything can be built up from the primes. And then after this, we will know how to formally prove that the square root of 2 and log base 2 of 3 are irrational. So these are things that we left off until now, but uh, these are important results in mathematics. We'll start with Euclid's lemma which is actually a theorem, but we call it a lemma. Let a and b be natural numbers, and let p be a prime. If p divides the product of a and b, then it divides a, or it divides b, or possibly both. Now, this is important that p is a prime in this case. So for example, if c is a composite number like 6, then the version of Euclid's lemma might not be true. For example, c divides the product, 6 divides 4 times 9, which is 36, but 6 doesn't divide 4 and 6 doesn't divide 9. So it's very important that p is a prime here. An important corollary of Euclid's lemma is that if p is a prime and p divides a product of integers, possibly 100 integers or something, then p must divide one of the factors. So the proof of this is by using induction and Euclid's lemma. Once we have Euclid's lemma, then we can uh, see a nice proof involving it. So let's prove that the square root of 2 is irrational. Suppose for the sake of contradiction that it is rational. What does this mean? It means that there are integers m and natural numbers n such that the square root of 2 is m over n. Now we're working with number theory. So let's uh, cross multiply and get rid of the square root of 2. We'll square things. Let's also assume that all common positive factors of m and n have been cancelled. So for example, if m and n are both even, cancel all of the things, cancel all the, the factors of 2. All right, so squaring this and rewriting this gives us 2n squared equals m squared. Now, what do we know about m squared? Well, 2 divides m squared, or in other words, m squared is even. So why does that tell us that m has to be even? Well, this is Euclid's lemma. 2 is a prime, and 2 divides m times m, so it has to divide m. Now, let's see what this tells us. Let's unwrap this definition a little bit. If 2 divides m, there's an integer k such that m is 2k. Then computing m squared gives us m squared is 4k squared. Now let's take the fact that we have m squared in two different ways and set them equal. So 2n squared is 4k squared, which tells us that n squared is 2k squared. Now what do we know about n squared? Well, n squared is going to be a multiple of 2. So by Euclid's lemma, 2 divides n. And this is a contradiction. Therefore, the square root of 2 must be irrational. Now, zooming out a little bit, what actually happened here? We used the fact that 2 divided m squared, so it has to divide m. And then that told us that 2 divides n squared, so 2 divides n. So it's a sort of back and forth type thing. As an example, to, to show that you understand what's going on here, adapt this proof to show the following facts, that the square root of primes are irrational, the square root of products of primes are irrational, the square root of n is irrational when n is not a square, and similar statements about cube roots. Now we move on to the fundamental theorem of arithmetic. It says that every natural number greater or equal to 2 
is either a prime, or can be expressed as a product of powers of distinct primes in a unique way, except for reordering of the factors. Now there's a lot of words in here, but what it means is you can write things as products of primes, and it's unique in the sense that if you write 3 to the 7 times 2 to the 5 and you change the order of the factors, these aren't considered different representations. So you can reorder them, but up to reordering, they're the same thing. And it's the only way to do it. The proof of this is we've already seen half of it. So we proved existence that every number has a prime decomposition. We proved that in the section on strong induction. We're going to skip the proof of uniqueness. You can look it up if you want. It's mostly just a nightmare of um, indices and subscripts, uh, but it's not a deep result. It sort of is what you'd expect it to be. However, let's see an application of the fundamental theorem of arithmetic. Here's the definition of log base a. So if a and n are positive real numbers, then log base a of n is equal to b means a raised to that power is n. Put another way, log base a of n is answering the question, how many times do I have to take the product of a to get n? So using that, let's prove that log base 48 of 72 is irrational. And as a hint, uh, or if you're worried about how complicated this is and what this number actually is, the 48 and the 72 don't matter very much. We'll see at the end that they don't really matter. They matter a little bit. This will again be a proof by contradiction. So assume that log base 42 of 72 is rational. So this means that it can be written as a natural over a natural. Well, wait a second. Shouldn't the top one be an integer? Why is it that I can assume that both of these are natural numbers and are both positive? Well, we do need to know one thing about log base 48 of 72. It's that we know that this is going to be a positive number, and it's positive because we know that we have to raise 48 to some positive power to get 72. If we raised 48 to a negative power, we would get smaller than 48. So we know that m and n have to both be naturals. Okay, so what does this mean? It means that by definition, 48 to the m over n is 72. Now let's take both to the nth power. So that tells us that 48 to the m is 72 to the n, because we raised both of these to the nth power. To remind you, a prime decomposition of 48 and 72 is as follows. So now replacing these, uh, with 48 and 72, we get the following. And by the fundamental theorem of arithmetic, we know that these representations have to be unique. So this tells us that the powers of 2 have to be the same, and the powers of 3 have to be the same. So this is by the fundamental theorem of arithmetic. Now, what does this system of equations give us? Well, it gives us that 4m is equal to m, and that's a contradiction. I'll let you think about why it's a contradiction. This gives us an example of how to prove that something is irrational using the fundamental theorem of arithmetic. Let's take a moment to reflect. Can the argument we just saw be adapted to show that other things are irrational? Can the square root of 2 is irrational proof be done without using Euclid's lemma? In what ways does the fundamental theorem of arithmetic tell us that the primes are the building blocks of the integers? In what ways does Euclid's lemma tell us that the primes are the atoms of the integers? Thank you very much, and have a great day.